Okay. <clears throat> so it is 6 p.m. And quite sure some people might be coming home. But if you have a question to ask, this is the time to come on and do a Q&A with me. And I will be on here until somebody asks a question. If not, I will get off. So this is what uh, a lot of people always come on. I always come on my uh, platform. And when I'm teaching, they, they're asking questions while I am teaching. And so that lets me know that some people would rather ask questions than to hear the teaching. Not everybody's like that, but some people are like that. So tonight I decided to do a Q&A. And I noticed there's another minister on. Uh, I can't even pronounce his name, but he's currently doing a Q&A as well. But um, this is a good time for people to ask questions and get to know me as well. So that will help as well. So if you want to get on, here is my page. And what you do, you click on the community page here and it will bring you here. Okay. And here's my apostle. This is good teaching. You should uh, come back to this page and listen to his teaching, including this one. They're an excellent teacher. So six people like this, I'm quite sure people are getting home. I should have came on later, like 7 o'clock. I think 6 p.m. was a little bit too early. Considering some people are an hour back, that's, what, 5 p.m.? But I was actually thinking about people abroad, that may had uh, questions. So this is, click on this link and it should bring you to me. And here's the meeting ID, just in case you're doing it on your phone. And here's the passcode. So come on and ask your questions and hopefully I will have to answer, and if I don't, I'm quite sure the Holy Spirit will lead me to answer your questions. Amen? So, Father, over to you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we just give you the honor and the glory. We just thank you for tonight. We thank you for the Q&A. We thank you for those who are coming on, if not now, but later. We thank you, Father God, that your will be done. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. So, like I said, the Q&A is really uh, asking a lot of questions. Some people ask questions like, um, what is a familiar spirit? Okay? People ask those type of questions. And they are good questions, but a familiar spirit is is what witches, warlocks, um People who operate in the kingdom of darkness, they conjure up spirits to come into our dream realm, okay, and to talk to us. Now, I want to say this, now, and I need to clarify this because I had this conversation this morning with one of my sons, and um, I had to say that there are also spirits that come in and in the likeness of the image of your uh, leadership, your pastor, you're like your pastor or apostle or that, you know, someone that you know, someone that you respect, right? And I don't want to, I have to be very, like, I'm trying to keep the teaching balanced because not everything is demonic, but I'm trying to keep things balanced that there is a time where a, a, a person that you know, someone that you trust, someone that's familiar to you, and they're giving you a word 
a word of knowledge, to give you a prophetic word. Because I have had people to dream about me and where I had ministered to them in the dream. So I, I don't, my, 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 the person that I was speaking to, they said, well, maybe because I had a lot on my mind, it was related to what I was thinking about. That could be so, I don't know. But we have to be aware that we could have night visits from certain individuals that generally we would not have night visits, right? But I do believe that Abba Father himself can come into our dreams in the likeness and the image of someone that we're familiar with and give us a strong prophetic word, a word for guidance, a word for encouragement. You know, I cannot say what God cannot do. That is not my place. As far as I'm concerned, he can do all things, right? The word of God says that we can do all things through Christ Jesus. So I believe that and I have faith in that. But going back to the, the question itself, a lot of people do ask questions about familiar spirits. And I'm going to say this again. Familiar spirits are those who use these spirits to come into your dream, either to molest you, either to, to do whatever the assignment may be. And generally people do not know what to do, how to, how to pray against it. And a lot of times you don't have to pray against a lot of stuff, especially if you take it to God in prayer, right? And Father wants you to know the truth. Father wants you to have that revelation, how to deal with demonic spirits. But some of you need to really get into the Bible and learn how to read the word of God and trust what God is revealing to you, because that is so important for you to understand what Abba Father is revealing to you and why he's revealing this truth to you. Um, there's a lot of open doors in our lives that generally we don't know those doors are open and the enemy will channel through those open doors and induce things to people in their sleep, in the spiritual realm, where we say that person's soul is under attack. And that's what I have been teaching for the past couple of weeks is about the soul being under attack, the mind, the emotion and the will right? It's under attack because that's where the enemy wants to take possession. So why do I say possession? Because before I became a believer in Christ Jesus, before I sold myself, sold, sold out, like sold out, I didn't sell my soul. I'm just saying when I committed my will over to him, um, I was possessed. So the enemy had possession of my soul, uh, meaning the world. I was still worldly. I was still carnal. I was still doing things that was pleasurable to me, but most of all to my flesh, because the wages of sin is death. So therefore, I was living a life of death. I was not producing uh, anything positive out of my life but destruction you know, being a fornicator, a liar, you know, and so much more drinking, parties, smoking, you name it. Okay. So <laughs> that's, that shows that I was not a woman of God, you know, now, obviously I'm a child of God, but I was not living like I had a father, a heavenly father, someone that I could put my faith and my trust in. I wasn't living like that. So when the enemy comes, he comes to oppress us. But then when we get delivered, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and as our Savior, and we confess that and we believe that in the fullness of the gospel, which is the good news, then we're delivered. And now what the enemy wants to do, Satan, he wants to oppress us, right? where he comes to oppress us with the cares of the world, just putting so much pressure on us. And it could bring a lot of entanglement, bondage to whoever that individual is. So when we're dealing with the body and we're dealing with the soul, we're also dealing with the intellect. And the intellect represents the will of that person. Whatever that person chooses, what they want to do, they would do it. 
God is not going to control what we do. God is not going to tell us what we should and shouldn't do. We have the will to do what we want when we want to do it. So we have to be very careful. That's why I'm opening up today. I'm not really on here to teach, but I really want you to ask questions. You know, if you have to call in or if you got to type it in the chat box, type it in the chat box. If you have any questions, what is it you want to know? What what is what is bothering you? You know, what's going on in your life? You know, what's going on with you? Are you okay? Is is it okay for me to ask if you're okay? It's not good for me or anybody to assume that you need deliverance. It's not good. For, it's not good when you look at a person and you say, "Oh, you need deliverance." No, that's not the case. I just want you to know that. I'm here to bring forth the gospel of Jesus Christ. And like my apostle says, stay in your lane. And that's what I'm doing. I'm staying in my lane and trusting in God that he will finish what he has started within my life. But I do get grieved in my spirit when I do see people lacking the wisdom, the knowledge and the understanding of the word of God. And the word is Jesus Christ. Jesus is the son of the living God. And so when we we don't have that knowledge or that understanding, it's easy for us to go straight. It's easy for us to backslide, like go back into the world, do things that is fleshly. So we have to um, trust God and believe God that he is going to change our name, right? He's going to do something new in you and me. He's going to do marvelous things in our lives, right? But we got to have faith to believe that our father is going to do this. He's going to finish the work that he has begun in me and you. So we trust God and we believe God and we confess God. And we confess him not just with our mouth, but we confess him with our lifestyle, the way that we live. You know, our lifestyle should line up with the word of God. When we are not lining up with, like, well, you know what? Hold up. When Jacqueline is not lining up with the word of God, it brings a lot of oppression into my life. Now, the Satan, he done lost the fight. He can't get me back. But most definitely, if I'm doing something that's contrary to the will of the Father, it will bring oppression to me. And I have to accept that reality real quickly. And the reason why I say I have to accept that reality real quickly, because I need I need deliverance. I need salvation. I need I need the Lord to minister to me and help me to be free and remain free. Amen. But unfortunately, not everyone is like that. Some people have people that they generally will like to listen to, people that they find on YouTube, people that really adheres to the type of teaching that they like to listen to. And that's okay. But the question is, are you getting freedom? That's the question. Are you getting freedom? You should be getting freedom based upon the knowledge and the understanding that you're getting from people like me, Jacqueline. Now, for those of you that's watching via by YouTube, I put in the chat the um the Zoom link and the pass the, the ID and the passcode, just in case you want to come into Zoom. Right now, I only have one person in Zoom. I'm not sure if you want to ask a question today. Do you want to ask a question today, or are you just listening? Speaking to me, Mama J. Yeah, speaking okay. to you. I would like to know how is it that when you have witchcraft in your bloodline, you have some people, you have some people in your family that is prospering and some that is not. And it's the same bloodline. I don't know if it, I don't know if um it, 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 if you're understanding what I'm saying. Oh yeah, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, it does happen like that, right? Yeah. One's more highly favored than the other, right? Yeah. Yeah, so we can see that when we look at um, certain stories in the Bible, uh, and a lot of times it, it's not just the bloodline, but it also goes back to the individual, the choices and the decisions that they made. So when you said that, it took me back to um, the book of um, Genesis, where we talk about Jacob and Esau. Yeah, and 
what Jacob did, he stole the birthright of his brother Esau because Esau was hungry. So he sold his birthright to his brother for a bowl of stew. But also we got to remember that Jacob intention was not to steal his brother's birthright. His mother encouraged him to deceive their father, Isaac, because Isaac was old and Isaac was getting blind, right? So the deception was he, we know that Esau was a very hairy individual based upon the story and the way uh, Jacob clothed himself to make it appear that he was, um, he was Esau. So we can see in the bloodline that there are some that is meant to prosper and there are some that's going to steal, lie, and cheat. And, it, and then there's others who uh, might not steal, lie, and cheat, and they get it the honest way. But it, it does boil down to the decision. And it all depends upon the generation. What generation is it? Like I'm the fourth generation, and, and the word of God says that God will visit the sins uh of the father, I, I think, but I think the there's a generation. Yeah, but I think there's a, another spiritual way he's he's redeeming the fourth and the fifth generation. I can't think of it right now because that sin on my father's side and my mother's side is no longer my portion because I'm now under the blood of Yeshua, uh, Jesus Christ. So because I remit my sins, I confess my sins. So now I should be inheriting the promises of God, but I need to have that revelation of knowledge. But generally, some some people are more attracted to witchcraft. Um, I have to be honest, you know, uh, when I was growing up, I was very attracted to watching horror movies. I was very attracted to things on more like sci-fi. I love sci-fi. Sci-fi is my thing, yeah? Um, anything that was unusual, but also intriguing at the same time. So I made a choice. I could have went to the dark side or I could have um, did neither at all but they were fighting for me. So i give you an example. Um, and I think I already shared these dreams with you, but I'm not sure. The enemy will come to us in our dreams, especially when we're children. Uh, I, and there's, there's some dreams that I can recall as a child, but there are some that I don't think I will ever recall them. And every time, um, like when I was a little girl and I would have dreams, I will always dream of myself being on stage performing or something like that. So I'm learn I'm learning that was really my destiny. God was revealing to me my destiny. Not saying that I was going to be a performer or I was going to sing. It was just that I saw something special about me. God revealed something to me that was special about me. And I I wanted what God wanted for me, but I didn't know it was God that was showing me that at the time. And then the enemy, when I would wake up and I go to the bathroom and I want to sit on the toilet, I would never sit on the toilet because at night it always felt like there was something in the toilet, like a snake. So that was a marine kingdom right there. That was a spirit that was operating from the waters that was trying to attack me when I would go to the bathroom at night. So me as a little child, you know, me, I sit in the palm, nobody's seat. My mom used to get onto me about that all the time. And I wouldn't sit on the toilet seat because I was afraid that something would come out the water and, and, and do something to me. What, as a child, I couldn't hardly think what it was, but I knew I discerned. So at that time, at such a young age, and now I'm an adult, I realized that as a child, I had discernment, but I didn't have no one to say, you have discernment. I didn't have anyone to say, you're going to be a prophetess. I didn't have no one to say, you're going to have an apostolic ministry and you're going to teach people. I didn't have that. What I had was the world telling me that I, I could have a boyfriend. I could go out. I could go party. I could go drinking. I had that. So that's the same for any family members, whereas one family member say, well, you know, what? I don't want any of that type of lifestyle. I'm going to focus on building my riches. OK, so but that doesn't mean they're not under the influence of witchcraft, because witchcraft, if you can remember, if you can recall, it is the root of rebellion. So a lot of times we 
we see people rebelling and doing something else other than the will of God until they get their deliverance. I hope that answers your question. But to say about the dream, so in this dream, so this dream came around in 2000. I had two dreams, so I can't remember. But anyhow, one was in 2014. The other one was in 2015. And in the dream, I was um, I was standing in a dark place. It was real dark. And I remember there was people surrounding me and they had cloaks, um, black robes. Their face was covered. And if you can recall in my teachings, if you can't see their face, it's because you know who they are and they don't want you to know that you know who they are. So generally, when you see them, you see nothing but a black face. It's all black, no features, no nothing, because spirits don't have a gender. First of all, the spirits do not have a gender. OK, so. I was standing there when I looked down on the ground, there was a line. There was a white line. And when I looked up, there was another person, uh, spirit on the other side, because it was a dream, so it was spiritual, on the other side, and they had a cloak, and their head was covered with a cloak, like a hoodie, right? But it was a big cloak with a hood. And that spirit spoke to me and said, come work for us. I'm like, what? Come work for us. Come come to come come over here so basically that spirit was saying to me cross over so leave where you are and cross over and work for us and i said no i'm not going to work for you and so the the spirit said um if you work for us your uncle will will come back alive and that's one thing about the enemy they're counterfeiters anyone that procreate or, or counterfeit it's not god that's 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 not god that's demonic it's satan because he's a counterfeiter remember he's a liar and so when i looked at the spirit the image that had the, it was a familiar spirit and it didn't hardly look like my uncle and i recall i looked at the familiar spirit and I looked in the eyes of that familiar spirit. And mind you, it was, a, it was at a distance. And when I looked, I saw how sad the eyes looked. And I looked at him and I said to the spirit, I said, that's not my uncle. And you can't, you can't bring him back to life. He's dead. And trust me, when that happened, I woke up. I got up. I got out of my bed and I went to praying. So you're always going to have somebody in the family that's going to be doing the opposite of the other sibling. You're always going to have someone in the family that's going to do something they, they shouldn't be doing. Even though you have the same bloodline, but there are some that has been, what you would say, ordained to do what they are doing. In other words, some, that's why I, we got to recognize who, who has our children when they keep our children. We don't know who's indoctrinating our children into these certain things when our children are not around. We don't know when there's what type of teachers they're in the classroom that's teaching our children and indoctrinating our children with false, uh, false teachings. There's a lot of stuff we don't know. So because we don't know, that doesn't mean we can't get to know. Amen? So, yeah, we're going to have that in the family, and it's okay. But, you know, Father said in his word, the grass is not always green on the other side. And it's not. It looks like it's green, but it ain't. Trust me. Hi, Ash. How are you? Do you have a question? Uh, yes, I do. Hi. How are you doing? Um, let's keep... Um... I have, oh my gosh, I have so many questions. Um, Take your time, okay? My first question, um, I just been dealing with a lot of like um, spiritual warfare and a lot of it is kind of new to me. So um, I know I had a dream uh, a couple of 
nights ago. And um, it was, I guess it was probably like a spirit of backwardsness because I remember, um, I don't remember the whole entire dream, but I do remember that the setting was at night because it was dark. And I was back at uni and I was back smoking again, which I definitely haven't smoked um marijuana or anything like in about seven months now so that was quite concerning um I know I've been in the middle of trying to fast and so I had that dream and I'm just like I don't know what's going on and then when I woke up um I was uh listening like something uh I forgot the the man of God's name um but he had this teaching on about a predator spirit and um that was quite interesting as well because a lot of of um what he was talking about about the spirit what happened to me especially when I was little so I just don't know where I am and I I feel like my spirit somewhere is caged and fragmented and I'm just trying to have everything put back together before it's too late. <laughs> it won't be too late. If long as God is in the picture, it's not going to be too late. So first of all, I heard you say uni. Where are you? You're in London. Oh, you said uni. Oh, uni oh uh, u- University. I'm not in London. I'm in okay. the United States, but I call I still call it uni. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's all right. All right, so are you a believer in Christ Jesus? Yes, I believe okay. that he came here and he was born of a virgin birth and he taught for 33 years. And he died on the cross and rose again on the third day. I do believe that. And he ascended into the heavens. And yes, he did. And he is coming back again. Okay. All right. I have to check the fruit. Do you go to church? Um, I have not attended church really, like, in the building. Um. I have honestly been dealing with this situation that I'm in for about a year. And it like every day is just kind of weirder. And I just have to, I don't know. Um, don't, you ain't got to talk about. Ballot. I just asked one question. So, oh, <laughs> yeah, I would rather if you, um, you and I set up a point, then we could go a little further because this is a, a public platform. I right. don't want you to put so much out there, okay? Because okay. we do have eyes and ears, right? Right. And so, in regards, the reason why I'm asking these questions is because I'm trying to find out from you what is the legal right? Because, first of all, demonic spirits cannot come without our permissive will. We all have permissive will. We will to do this, we will to do that, or we will not to do anything, right? But we do have permissive will. And so when you have these dreams and you see yourself smoking again, that's something of the past, right? So you said earlier, spirit of backwardness, you see yourself doing the things of the past. So now if you and I was doing a one-on-one, which I'm going to act like we're doing a one-on-one, I will say to you, did you renounce? doing drugs did you renounce it i do believe i did yes i think that was like one of the main things that i renounced so yeah i i would have to say yes okay so have you ever had deliverance i have okay and how long ago was that um over a year okay now generally people don't know this but you know it's like even though we had deliverance over a year but usually it's good to have at least two to three deliverances within a year Ah. 
Yeah, because the reason why? Because we're dealing with strong man. We're dealing with the strong man. And your dream is a representation of a strong man. And the stronghold is what you used to do, drugs. Now, I know you said marijuana, but it's still a substance. So I would call it a substance. So you don't sound like I don't sound like I'm making a, a something bigger than what it is, right? So there's still a stronghold in your life. And the dream is the indication of what that stronghold is. And you need we, counseling because that's what I do. I counsel you, get more information from you to find out the reason. So what is the stronghold? So let me give you an example. What, why did you initiate smoking marijuana? Now, pause right there. You don't have to answer that because, like I said, you need a private one-on-one -on -one with me. But whatever initiated you, what, whatever you, the decision, like, for example, I work in mental health field, so I'm a, uh, I'm a mental health counselor, right? I work, I teach groups, I do various things, right? But one of the things is, is that generally a person who smokes marijuana is not generally for pleasure, but to deal with depression to deal with anxiety for cope, coping methods you know some people don't have good coping skills so they rather be sedated than to deal with reality there's multiple reasons why a person gets high or smoke or drink whatever their substance or whatever their pleasure is right but at the end of the day you're not just going to wake up and say oh yeah i'm gonna smoke a joint no, there's something that led you, that stronghold, the strong man. The strong man is more or less uh, the principality, the ruler over whatever entered your life and led you in that path to do what you did. So, yeah, you renounced, but did you deal with the stronghold? Did the person deal with the stronghold? Did they identify what was the strong man and the stronghold? Those, those are questions that I would start asking if I was doing a one-on-one -on -one with anyone because I need to know what's going on with you, okay? So I hope that answers that one question uh, for you. So that's why you're having that dream. And yeah, you renounce, but guess what? The stronghold is still there, Okay. Ash, are you there? Yes, thank you. Okay, so is that that's your only question? Oh, uh, <laughs> um, let's see. I, I'll try to make a easier question. Um, easier. Yeah, because I feel like all my questions would be so complex. Um. So. I know, oh, okay, how do you know if you were, like, initiated in the Marine Kingdom? Because all of that is new, but there's... Why, just... why, would, why would you have those questions? Um, I, like... In in college, um, I was very very interested in um, the African deities. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's really what happened. Um, the just different uh, religions and just trying to learn them because. Actually, all of that was brand new. I never knew any of it. And there were different classes that we took or, you know, had to take. Um, so in our African-American history class, you know, it was brought up and, and it was interesting. So I, it was just like a study. And um, just from there, it, it just caught my interest so much. Do you know about Mammy Waters? Mammy Water, Water. We got to be able to say it with a Western accent. You know about Mammy Water, the Queen of the Sea? Do you know anything about that? Did they teach you that in African studies? No. The no. Uh, we only were taught about like Obatala, Oya, Yamiya, 
um, Eshu, um, Ogun. Yeah, Ogun. That's right. I know about that one. Um, Where's your family from originally? Because for you to have that type of interest, that means this is somewhat similar to what I, I was saying earlier. There's someone in the bloodline was actively involved in witchcraft. And in Germany, when they make covenants with the, with the kingdom of darkness, they generally initiate the fourth, of the, the fourth or fifth generation. Like I, the first girl that's born to such and such, you know, I will initiate her into the kingdom or the first boy be initiated. A lot of times the initiation is through covenants. So let me ask you a hard question, one that's hard for you. Have you participated in any witchcraft? Unfortunately, I was, yes. That's, I the, that's all know. I need. That's all I know. That's all I want to know. See, and there's another thing. Because I am a teacher, when I ask one question, I don't need to know the rest. Because the Holy Spirit is the one that's prompting me to ask you these questions. Because there's no way an ordinary person is going to come online and say, how do you know you've been initiated into the water kingdom? The marine kingdom is one of the, let me tell you something, the marine kingdom is nothing to be reckoned with. You think about demonic spirits that could walk on dry earth, but think about those demonic spirits that operate not only in the dry earth, but they operate in the water. It's a very strong demonic spirit. There's a lot of open portals in your life, Ash. Yeah, sure, you renounce. But did you surrender your will completely over to Jehovah God? Now, you don't have to answer that now because I don't want you to feel like you got to give an account to me. You don't have to give an account to me. But it's very interesting that these portals were opened up to you through teaching. But the, the, the desire, the emotion that was connected to the teaching lets me know it, ha it has already happened in your bloodline, whether it was on your father's side or your mother's side. Does that make sense? Yes. Because I, I'm not, I'm not, anyone would be intrigued. I mean, why would they make uh, tons of movies about a book called Harry Potter? Of course, they intrigue children with, with, imagination, etc. And now you got a bunch of children from that generation are not doing certain things that they, they should have done in the beginning. Does that make sense? Yes. So your generation is most likely hypothetically because you look young. That's if that's you. Yes. You most likely are that generation, the Harry Potter generation. Most yeah, so Harry yeah. Potter came out when, when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. Yes. Harry Potter came out and Harry Potter, and, you know, and a lot of parents, unfortunately, looked at it as, as they would look at Disney World. Disney World, oh, God, that's a whole nother level of another conversation. But because of that, the intrigue, the excitement, even in your voice, I can still hear it. I can still hear the spirit is still in operation. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So you, guess what? You need to. Uh, <laughs> you, yeah, you need deliverance. OK. Um, how you want to go about it, who you want to do the deliverance. And. I. I I suggest that you start going back over your life again and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you what door or what what gate is still open to you. You you know there's still something there in you that is still in operation and that's probably why you're having those dreams. Those dreams are letting you know others Abba can speak to you in your dreams and reveal to you. And you said you was fasting. And so that's another thing. You have to be careful when you're fasting. And don't, I mean, you just shared that. I'm not saying you're fasting now, but when you are fasting, you have to remember, and anybody else out there that's listening to me, the fast is not for Jehovah God. It's for you because Abba don't have to eat. Mm -hmm. Fast is for you. But there's certain things that people have to go on 
Um, me personally, when I, I like to do dry fast, I don't know why I, I just can't drink when I'm fasting. It just, ugh, God, just ugh, I can't do it. So I like to do dry fast, but when I'm fasting, I'm also have scriptures, prayer points that I'm praying. I'm not, I'm not praying for God to do something for me. I'm praying that God's will continue to manifest in my life, that I will continue to walk and abide in his will and not give over to the things of this world. That's what my fast is for because of the type of ministry that I do. Amen. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So it seems like <laughs> every time I open the Bible, like, um, I'm being yelled at <laughs> or it's just you heathen <laughs> or you, you wicked one and destruction. And it's just like, okay, let's put this down um, and let's try it again. And it, it just seems like that now is like every day. It's, it seems like I'm trying to, find joy and gratitude and everything like that and not close off my heart but it's just like I feel so broken Um, yeah because there's a spirit of rejection there and it's like how's your relationship do you know who your father was and how was your relationship with your father my parents are still together um I didn't ask that I said how was your relationship with your father um like I I was it was good. Um he was strict, you know, um as far as uh you know if, if you well I wouldn't say like okay. okay yeah, so he was strict. Let, just, because, pause. just pause. The question is, how was it you said it was good? You said brokenness. That comes from rejection, feeling that you don't belong or fit in. Feeling you are worthless and of no value, always accusing yourself. Feeling of failure, uselessness, and being invisible to others. Feelings of not being loved, accepted, or able to have friends. Feelings that you are not important, nor are your needs. Feelings of never being good enough, okay? Um, Fearing man being perfectionist, driven of performance mode to be loved or to measure up to other standards. This is the root of rejection. Where it came from is generally, now if my, yeah. apostle, was, if my apostle was on here, generally he will say, oh, that type of rejection came from the womb. So he will say, did your mother want you? Did your parents want you? It during um, perception. That's what he was saying. Okay. I have been told I was wanted. Um okay. I was told I was like the miracle child as far as what for my mom, but uh there was a lot of uh death before my birth. So my mom lost her mom and her brother um before I was born. Um, and my sibling and I are nine and a half years apart. I'm, I'm the youngest. So, um, I don't know. I know she said it was like a, a hard kind of pregnancy because she was older. Than me. Yeah. Yeah. And she said it did take some work to get here or yeah. to get me here. Yeah. Um, which I just kind of found out about, but um, so, I guess like so, a lot of pressure was put on me when I was little, um, especially between uh, some of my cousins that were all like around the same age, um, just, you know, probably months apart from each other. But it, it did seem like a performance like who who accomplished what first or mm-hmm. who got the best grades and okay. you know things well, of that see, nature. I, I apologize for cutting you off um, or crossing you. But 
that I'm just giving you, I just want you to think about these things here. Like if you get the opportunity, just go back over the video and listen to what I listed out because everything I'm only listing out based upon what you volunteered to me, you feel broken. Now, if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and savior and you're walking in, in the Lord, a lot of time that rejection is not about you. That rejection is, um, because of who you serve, but I don't know you and I really don't know how much time you give to the Lord or how much time you give to the word of God. Um, a lot of guys uh, come on to YouTube and they YouTube is a good place to get good knowledge and wisdom, but you have to have strong discernment. And also it's, it, 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 it's a place of deception. And a lot of people don't know what's going on with, with why they're in the position that they're in. Okay. Okay. So with that, there's some people asking asking questions in the chat box. So if you have any more questions, just hold on to them and let me get to the chat. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right. I'm gonna deal with the first one, not the last one. Okay. Again, these are strongholds. Like for example. Those of you that's doing self-deliverance. Are you closing the doors when you are you fun? Are you doing self deliverance from a book? And are you, did you pray? And that's the spirit of the Lord. If this was the deliverance for you, that's another thing. Self deliverance is okay, but there's some things that you're not going to be able to deliver yourself from. That's why. Our Father has deliverance ministers, right? And if you're struggling with lust, depression, and blasphemy, uh, and it's attacking whoever's listening, the spirit of blasphemy is definitely a, another stronghold. And when you're dealing with uh, lust of the flesh, uh, that's dealing with whoredom. There's a lot of things that's connected to the lust of the flesh and lust of the eye. And so my question is, before you did, the um the deliverance did you do renunciations did you do repentance what did you do so here the hoarder spirits work in a reprobate they work in it so god said i will turn you over i will turn them over to a reprobate mind right so it works in a reprobate it's a stronghold. It's a bloodline curse. So a lot of times if you're doing self-deliverance and you don't have the knowledge that you're dealing with a bloodline curse, then guess what? You might be opening up more doors for those demons to attack you because of lack of knowledge and not taking the time to study. Oh, I'm sorry, Rami. That question wasn't for you. It was for um, Jensen. But going back to number, now, now I'm going to answer your question, Rami. Uh, going back to number one, uh, staggering with keeping job down within your finances. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Family, that's a game right there. Family, talking to community, that's rejection. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. That's rejection. Either because you, because I, I'm familiar with you, and a lot of times when your family doesn't believe what you believe or you don't believe what they believe, you're going to be rejected. Not because of who you are, but who you believe in. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Um, It just seems like a lot of Christians that I know they're all quite close to their family and they always go to see them for Christmas and weekends but or parties or I don't get invited to anything. Um, they just keep their distance from me. Okay, and did you ask why? Um, there's a lot of stuff um, since the childhood that I've actually been through. Um, but... I have, I don't know, I think it's, I'm guessing my mum and dad threw a seed um, and they separated me from my siblings when I was young 
Um, they tried to get rid of me, tried sending me off to India when I was 11 years old to try to get me married off on a one-way ticket. It, it, it's just yeah. something that they've just separated me all the time. Yeah. Um, I was still in the same house under one roof, but I had to stay in my room. Right. For about a year, and um, they kept me kind of locked locked up in a room, and I wasn't yeah. allowed to go out or anything. So it stems from um a childhood. Yeah. Um. So, and when I became a Christian, it just they just kind of attacked me. Um, the Holy Spirit did say to sort of keep your distance, keep a, keep them at arm's length. Um, but I was going through so much and I did kind of, kind of see them now and then, but it just escalated. It went worse. Um, and, um, yeah. All right. So let me share something with you guys. Yeah. Um, I got one person just chatting away in the bus from the UK and he asked me for deliverance. But if you saw the title of my message, I'm not here to do deliverance. I'm here to do Q&A. Now, if the Holy Spirit compels me to do deliverance, then I would do it. But you can't push me to a spot and expect me to do deliverance. I don't have to do deliverance. I don't know you. I don't know why. Now, if it was Ram, Rami and there's two people on here I know, you know, I would move in that direction. <sighs> Let me just read this right here real quick. I believe in deliverance it's in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm about to find deliverance message to do. Do you have keys to seek and to look forward when trying to find one? Okay. I don't quite understand that, so I'm not going to respond. All right. That's why I need you guys to come on the Zoom. I got that Zoom link right there. You can call in. Or you could come on here because it's so much better when I can hear you and I could tap into your into your your hearing your voice and I could discern what's going on with you. Okay. So let me go, let me talk to everybody that's on here and even the persons that are listening via uh, YouTube. You and I and everybody in this universe needs to understand that Satan is a legalist. I have taught that in the past, but I haven't taught it recently. Satan is a legalist. He can't just come demonically trafficking in and out your life unless there is a door open. Okay? We have what we call permissive will. We have free will. We can do what we want when we want to do it. Okay? We can have faith to believe, faith to receive. We can have faith. We can put faith anywhere we want to put because God gave us that type of faith. Right? But you have to understand that Satan is a legalist. He's like a, a prosecutor. He can't prosecute you without a cause. So let me give you a scripture. Proverbs 26, verse 2. It says, like the sparrow in her wandering, like, like a swallow in her flying, so the causeless curse does not alight. A curse cannot, a curse doesn't come without a cause. Let me just break it down to you that way. It has to have a cause to come into your life. Satan is a legalist and he has understanding of God's laws and commands. His job is to entice and tempt us to sin. Obviously, he's, he succeeded in that, right? And then here it says, because it is through sin or the breaking of God's laws that he is given a right to attack. What is the legal right? Why is these demonic spirits coming into your dream? Why are they masquerading themselves in your dream with familiar spirits? What is the legal right? Why are you being attacked, right? But people don't think about the legal rights. What they're thinking about, I need deliverance. So deliverance, like I said in my other teachings, is not always a solution. You can get deliverance and farming up, but there is a scripture where it says, People do get deliverance, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing it, but just like a dog, they go back and lap it back up again. I have seen people vomit. I don't see people running nose, snotty nose, everything. I've seen people go through some mega deliverance. In less than six months, less than a year, they go right back and lap it back up again because they have not fully committed their will to Jehovah God. 
Satan cannot just come into your lives and attack your finances. First of all, this is no indirection to anybody that's listening to me via uh, YouTube or on uh, the Zoom. I'm just teaching you here. So you can think about some things that you have done and you have to pray and ask the father in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, that his Holy Spirit will reveal to you what is the legal right. Sometimes when guys go, you know, for example, people say, well, do you charge to do deliverance? I don't charge to do ministry. I charge for my labor. You hire somebody, you must pay them for their labor. But for me to say, oh, no, I charge for deliverance. I don't charge you for deliverance. It's my time. It's my labor. That's what I'm charging you for. It's like when you go to the doctor, you're sick. You're giving the symptoms. But he, he, you're not paying him for the prescriptions, but you're definitely going to pay for his time and his diagnosis. And that's what I do. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a physician in the deliverance, okay? I'm, I'm not the great doctor, but I ain't one of the physicians that has the ability to do what Jehovah God has given me permission to do because I gave my will over to him. But when you go visit a witch, a warlock, when you go visit people that does stuff in the kingdom of darkness and you put your money on their altar, you're going to have financial problems. See, because you came into covenant, you know, there's sexual covenant, okay? There's sexual covenant. There is monetary covenant. There are blood covenants, which is the same as a soul tie, giving up something of yourself and coming into the powers, into the powers of the enemy. The, word, the enemy, he, he's wicked. He don't care about you. He don't care about the fact that you want here asking for deliverance because he knows you have not gave up that legal right. And so when you put money on the altar, so if you go to a source, you go to a witch, you go to someone that operates in psychic powers, you go to someone that reads tarot cards, you go to someone that does water witching, you, you do all these things here and you pay them maybe, what, 100 200 I know people that pay people $3,000 for deliverance. And when they got the $3,000, gave it to the person, guess what? They was in bigger trouble than they were before they gave them anything because some people come in the disguise of a witch okay some people come in disguise and and they want what they want when they want want it and so you have to be careful where you put your money at even in churches i know people that has attended churches put money in the church and then next thing you know the church no longer exists why? Because there was such a such a problem within the church, so therefore the church fell apart. Guess what? You planted in that church. You have to call your money back. You got to pray and ask God to root up anything, root it up out of that kingdom, out of that place, out of that, that territory, so that your finances can begin to prosper. Again, so when you're entertaining things or you're putting your money on the altar, getting into covenant agreements with people, places, and things, this is where the battle begins. And, and, and if you're not confessing another word, if you're not speaking God's word and standing on his word and having faith to believe that he's going to change your circumstances around, then you're going to always be under attack. And that's what a lot of people need to know. A lot of people need to understand that. And it's unfortunate. That's where the enemy likes to, to um, attack. He loves to attack our finances. He loves to attack our relationships with our wives, our husbands, our sons, and our daughters, and our parents, and so on. But it could be something that's in the bloodline as well. Like there's some families that just can't stay together. As much as they try to stay together, they just cannot stay together because there's strife in the family. There's unforgiveness in the family. There's so much in the family bloodline and no one is taking the authority to renounce and break those generational curses and some people say, well, there's no such thing as generational curses. Okay, there's no such thing as generational curses because you don't believe it. And, oh, it's not in the Bible. Okay, so it's not in the Bible. But does it mean it still is not going to be in effect in other people's lives? Because you don't believe it. You don't want to be a participant of it. 
You can tell there's generational curses. If you've been living in your family long enough, trust me, you could tell from the younger generation when it's like, oh my gosh, this child act just like Uncle So-and-so and Uncle So-and-so has been deceased for 20 years and all of a sudden this little baby is just born a year and a half ago and now the child is beginning to talk, begin to do things and guess what? Everybody say, don't he look like or don't he talk like, don't that child walk like? It's a generational thing. It operates through the bloodline. So when you find out what the enemy is doing and why he's doing it, then you could be delivered from the kingdom of darkness. Now you could be delivered from the attacks. Now you could be delivered from the sin that has brought this hardship into your lives. Now you could be delivered from the oppressor. Now you could be delivered from the dominion of darkness because there is dominions in the kingdom of darkness and there is and there are reigns different levels of, of of activities in the kingdom of darkness it's like a government but it's it but it's in the kingdom of darkness you know mm-hmm. think about when we're talking about the kingdom of darkness we're really talking about the government of the kingdom of darkness it is huge okay it is huge it operates all throughout this world. Why? Because Satan is the God of this earth. Okay. So another thing is you have to go back to your first love because first, first, first thing, Jesus defeated Satan on the cross. He defeated him. Amen. And, and because of he defeated him through his death, burial and resurrection, we now have the authority to operate with that kingdom right that we inherited through our our communication through saying i accept or i believe i confess jesus christ when you do that now you're inheriting the benefits from the kingdom of god right but the enemy he wants to overthrow you he does not want you to walk in your destiny your what you're destined to do he does not want you to walk in righteousness so what does he do the young lady said it earlier ash spiritual warfare and a lot of times people think more about getting deliverance but deliverance does come with spiritual warfare just every person that asked me a question on here even the person in the chat it is spiritual warfare the enemy is not going to let you go that easy. If you, if anyone has heard my last teaching, people that comes into covenants and 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 gets initiated to become a witch or a, a wizard or you know whatever they want to do in the kingdom of darkness, there's different uh, jobs in the kingdom of darkness. But when you surrender your will completely over, and then all of a sudden you make this conscious decision that I don't want to do this no more. Guess what? It's on warfare they're going to fight for you they're not going to just give you up or that easy they're going to go for war for you because you made a covenant you made a covenant and now that you accepted jesus christ and now that you coming into a new covenant they don't care they're coming for you they're coming and they're going to come in your dreams. They're going to come in your finances. They're going to come in your money. They're going to come in your mind. A lot of people are schizophrenic because they attack the mind. And the mind is a battlefield. And that's why the word of God said, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed with the, with the word of God, with the renewing of your mind. And presenting your bodies as a living sacrifice unto Jehovah God that is pleasing and acceptable to him. Your body, meaning that so that means your soul is a part of your body, and your soul is your mind and your emotion. And a lot of a lot is unfortunate. I, it's really unfortunate that many has received deliverance, but yet they are still not oppressed, but were oppressed. They are oppressed because no way the enemy can possess what God has already purchased. But the oppression is so strong. And the warfare is so strong. Like a lot of people say, oh, because I'm a deliverance minister and I do deliver. If you knew the warfare I go through for teaching the stuff that I teach, for praying for people, that's why I don't, I don't quickly jump out there and start praying for folks. Because I, I got to think about the warfare I'm going to endure because I, 
I, I, deliver, I helped deliver you through the word of God by the Holy Spirit. And now, guess what? So, no, I'm not going to just quickly uh, run out there and say, okay, let's do deliver. I'm not doing that. I got to get to know you. I got to know what are you doing? How are you living? You know, you, you can't do it here on YouTube, right? I respect that. Trust me. I respect that. I don't want you to put nothing out there that's going to come back to you and hurt you. Okay? But you need to know me. So many people get in contact with me. But it's amazing how people will have money to go see a witch. They will have money to go put a curse on somebody. And that's another thing. If you did witchcraft and you practiced witchcraft and you was living in the kingdom of darkness day and night, night you night you was doing astral projection or speaking curses over people. If you're speaking curses over believers, those who are believers in the word of God, and that curse does not do the very thing it's supposed to do. It has to go back to you, the sender. And, and a lot of people don't realize that. God said in his word, he said he will watch over his word and see that his word will go to do the very thing he sent his word to do. And his word would not come back to him void because it's done the very thing it's supposed to do. But now look at Satan. He's counterfeiting that. Now you're speaking curses, but if the curse, it does not accomplish what it's doing, guess what? It's got to come back to you. And like, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's going to come back to you, especially if you're the one that's speaking curses over God's people. And if you don't know nothing about that believer, you don't know their prayer life, you don't know how they fight, but you're just speaking curses. Guess what? What's good for the geese is good for the gander. So a lot of times people forget they spoke curses over this. Oh, I can't stand her. I hope she don't accomplish nothing. I hope, I hope, I hope this will happen. Those are curses. So guess what? The very thing that, that, if that her or he, whoever you're speaking about in that negative form, guess what? And they are praying people. They are warriors in the kingdom of God. Those curses will not affect their lives, but it will affect you. And Abba Father will see that to come to pass. And a lot of times people forget that. Did you renounce the curses that you spoke over other people? Did you renounce the curses that you spoke over yourself? Did you renounce that you are a failure and you will not prosper? Did you renounce that you are your your that for speaking brokenness over yourself when you belong to the kingdom of God? Did you renounce those evil doctrines and declarations and decrees that you spoke over yourself? Because I'm 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 using these right now because people out there that's watching this is going to watch it in the future. Satan is a legalist. He cannot just attack you without a cause. He can't, especially if you're a child of God. So let me make sure there's no questions on here on YouTube. Okay. All right. So, you know, so the thing is deliverance can begin in your home. Deliverance begins with your confession. Deliverance begins when you begin to repent. And repentance means not to go back and repeat the same behavior again. If the person is repenting, but yet they cannot escape the behavior, then you're in bondage. You're in bondage. Because you're doing it over. I keep repenting and I keep going right back and do it again. I keep going back. Guess what? You're in bondage. You need, a, you need deliverance. Because this thing won't just leave you. It won't go. Because it still has a legal right. Generally, when you listen to deliverance ministers, they will say, what is the legal right? Why are you here? And the spirit will say, I have been here in this family for 500 years and I have legal rights to this bloodline. Whoa. Whoa. You know, you hear that in the physical and that's a spirit speaking from the spiritual realm, letting the deliverance minister 
No, the legal rights is 500 years. You mean to say your bloodline is 500 years old and there's a covenant that is still standing today? Boy, you talk about some spiritual warfare? That's, some, that's, that's, that's deep. That's some serious warfare. There are spirits that will come from the marine kingdom and they will say, this bloodline belongs to us. And the deliverance minister will say, well, what is the legal right? And they will say the legal right is. I'm not going to put it out here. But they would let them know what the legal right is. And the person will say, well, I don't know who that is. I don't know. They don't even know they manifesting. There's, there's such a thing that we call in the, in the mental health world, manic behaviors, where someone is so manic that, that they cannot control their speech, they cannot control their eyes or their body, that they're, they're physically out of control. That is a demon that is manifesting. So guess what? Satan is a legalist. Many of you say you need deliverance, but what's the legal right? Why is he still, ha why, how can he still uh, come in and, and, and do what he's doing to you and knowing that you're blood bought, knowing that you confess Jesus Christ, all of that, because it's the bloodline. Uh, Mother Sadie asked the question, why is it one side of the family is wealthy or this child succeeds and the other one is struggling with poverty because it's the bloodline. There's a covenant that was made. And a lot of times we don't remember those covenants that we made. I remember when we was little kids growing up in London, we used to do, um, we used to watch those um, cowboy movies as kids like Indians, cowboys and Indians. And we used to see them cut their wrists and saying, we are blood brothers. So as children, we were, we were, cut our wrists real carefully and then we will mingle our blood with each other not knowing as a child that was a covenant all we knew was i'm your blood sister and you're my blood brother because we was mimicking what we saw on the television but at the end of the day guess what some of us is still in bondage to that covenant and not knowing that we had done that some of you were sexually assaulted as children you don't even rec recall i didn't i had uh, you know, when I found out I was sexually assaulted as a child, as a little girl, I was 21 years old. 21, and I had no knowledge. I was like, <laughs> you joking. So guess what? When someone sexually molests you, they not only depositing that, 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 that sin into your life, but now you you inherited that that unclean spirit now that is oppressing that now possess you from your childhood, and now you have a lust spirit. You see how people get pedophiles when you look at a pedophile, a pedophile, what they call themselves, people that molest children or, or adults. Then you, when you, when when the therapist or whoever the psychologist do a background, they find out this person has a history of sexual abuse, so it was inherited. It was something that was passed down to that child, and guess what? No counseling, nothing, and they grow up, and now they have a lust problem, and they find themselves molesting children because they were molested or sometimes they may not have been molested they just have a fetish for children and they and they want and and that's what demonic spirits they are demonic they are clean and all they want is the flesh have you ever been in the bed as a woman or as a man, and you could feel someone sexually assaulting you, and there's no one in your house, there's no one in your bedroom, and yet you could feel someone, the, a presence, a spirit on you, and it's having sex with you, and you're paralyzed with fear, and you can't move. And you're trying to get up, you're trying to scream. When we was... Uh, 17, 16 years, a whole bunch of us kids, young adults, young boys and girls, we all sat down one day and we was talking, they called it the devil riding your back, where people would be sleeping and they feel something sitting on their chest or a heavy presence on their back and they can't move, but they can hear themselves shouting for help. 
but yet they can't get up. That is a spirit called paralysis. That is another demonic spirit where it, para it paralyzes you in your bed. So if it's doing that to you in the bed, guess what it's doing with your finances? It's paralyzing your finances. Because it's not just attacking you. It's attacking everything about you. Everything. And there's a lot of people that are suffering with that. And another thing that keeps people in bondage, secrets. Everybody's got a secret. And Satan knows. That's why the Bible says, therefore, there is no condemnation to them that is in Christ Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach. There is no condemnation. But when Satan knows you have a secret, that's the legal right. Because you have not dealt with the secret. And if you don't have any memories of the initiation, the sexual sin that happened to you as a child, there's the legal right. That's the legal right. I'm telling you, it explains so much to me why I was so what sexual as a young child. I was so sexual as a young child because I was molested as a young child. It explains everything. When I look back over my life and I see I had a child out of wedlock and I was a teenager when I had my child, it all stemmed from the sexual sin that was attacked when I was attacked as a little girl. And then when you don't recall these things, this is called trauma, PTSD. And some of you have triggers. So you don't just need deliverance, you need counseling. The counseling is the key. And you need to be taught how to do spiritual warfare, God's way. Not your way, but his way. Okay? Okay. I hope, I hope this helped, but now I'm going to close up. I'm going to pray for those of you that's on here and for those of you that are watching. And please don't forget to like. Don't forget to share if you have to share. And don't forget to subscribe if you have not subscribed. Okay? You need prayer. Prayer is good. Keep praying, daughters. Keep praying. Don't give up. Don't give up. Learn God's names. He has many names. Learn how to speak the name Jehovah Gibber, the God of war. Release his name. Jesus said, when well, anything you ask my father in my name, it shall be done for unto you. But you have to ask the father. You got people say, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus said, anything you ask my father in my name. So when you're praying, you're praying to the Father. He made a way for you and I to pray to Abba, Father, Adonai, Elohim, Jehovah, God, Yah, Yahweh, Yahushua, Hamashiach. Learn the Hebrew names of God. Learn the promises that he has given you. And when the enemy comes in and wants to attack you, you invoke those promises and you remind him who you are. You remind him of the promises. You remind him of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You remind him about the blood of the lamb. You remind him with the word of God. You speak scriptures. But you don't get all emotional and tangled. Leave me alone, Satan. I've been blood bought with the blood of Jesus. Well, <laughs> that's carnal. That's fleshly. That's not praying in the spirit. That is not dealing with demonic powers in the spirit. This is spiritual. This has nothing to do with your flesh until you start doing things that makes it access to them. So if you still lie, they got access. If you're still speaking negative over other people's lives, they got access. If you're still slandering, backbiting, and gossiping, they got access. If you're not supporting the kingdom of God, but yet you got money on the altar in the kingdom of darkness, they're going to attack your finances. That's another problem. Many support the kingdom of darkness, but yet they want God to bless them. No, your money's entangled. You got to get your money off that altar. You got to get your money off that altar. So that God could bless you and you could get a job. You could get a good job and get your own space.
All right, so Father, we just thank you for the women that are on here tonight. And those of you that's watching now and going to watch in the future, Father, we just thank you, God, that every open door that is open, Abba Father, you will close it. You will close it in the name of Jesus Christ. So those of you that is watching and those of you that's online here on Zoom, if you can, just go ahead and if you, have, you should have anointing oil in your household too, you know. You should have your little bottle or something and anoint the top of your head. And when you're praying, anoint your head. And when you're praying, anoint underneath your belly button. Sometimes it depends on what I'm praying about, what the Spirit of the Lord compels me to do. Sometimes I anoint my hands, anoint my feet. I just rub the oil over me, I, I, you know, because I'm, I'm going in. I'm going into the kingdom of darkness, and, and I'm going in with the, with the word, the sword of the spirit. You understand me? It's like Gideon. Gideon was not going to fight this battle unless God showed him it was for him to fight the battle, and not only to fight the battle, but to win the battle. You ever read Gideon? Read Gideon, the book of Judges. That deals with the mindset, cognitive thinking, cognitive behavior. Judges chapter six, if I'm not mistaken. Gideon, read about Gideon. Gideon didn't just jump up because God said, go do this. God, no, he could say, I'm not going to do this until you do this and show me it's you that's speaking to me, Lord. Speak to me, Lord, but reveal yourself in the midst of your communication to me. Ah, oh, praise God. We give you praise in this, God. We give you praise in this, Abba Father. Father God, we just thank you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. We give you praise tonight, Father God. We glorify and exalt thee, Abba Father, Adonai Elohim, Jehovah God. Father, send forth your ministering angels to minister to your daughters, to your sons, even to Cedric and his spouse, Nicole, even them, Abba Father, even those who are listening. Abba, I pray they will prostrate themselves, position themselves to you, Abba Father. I pray, Lord, that they will repent of their sins, repent of their forefather's sin and renounce the bloodline consequences. Every demonic power that has affected their lives. Abba Father, I pray now that those consequences, they will be delivered from the consequences of their forefathers in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Father God, we welcome and acknowledge your presence on this Zoom on this YouTube. We thank you, Father God, that you're able to deliver in the name of Yeshua. Father God, we thank you as we commit our will to you. We ask God that you forgive us in the name of Yeshua. And let me tell you something. If Sometimes people forget the sin that they have committed. If you sponsor someone to do something that was unclean, you're going to suffer the consequences of that. If you sponsor someone to get an abortion, you're going to suffer the consequences of that. Now, it doesn't mean you ain't safe, but there are still consequences. And that means your money's been tied up in that. Amen? So you have to repent and ask God to forgive you for being a sponsor for someone to have an abortion. If you're, the, the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. The, not, not money, but the love of money. Okay? So I'm just calling these things out because I'm picking it up in my spiritual realm. And many of you need needs to just ask God to forgive you for putting your money on evil covenants, on the evil altars. Just begin to repent. Whatever the Holy Spirit is telling you to repent right now, just begin to repent. Ask God to forgive you. And you forgive yourself. Ask Abba Father to teach you to love yourself. 
the way he loves you so that you will have the ability to love your neighbors. Pray. While I'm talking, let the Holy Spirit begin to minister to you right now. Let the Spirit of the Lord begin to minister to your heart. Father's in a contrite heart. Yeah? A heart that is remorseful. Let, the, let God purge you with hyssop so that you will be white as snow. Let Abba Father remove the blemish, the spots, and the wrinkles in your life. And cleanse you now with the blood of his son, Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach. Just take your time and believe that God is doing it. Doing it for you, Rami. Doing it for you, Ash. Doing it for you, Mother Sadie. Even for me, even for our children, even for our descendants. Let the blood cleanse you. You that's on YouTube, that's watching. Let the blood begin to cleanse you and wash you. Let the blood of the Lamb speak for you. Speak a better word than the blood of Abel. Abba, we just pray and ask for your forgiveness. Father, forgive us in the name of your son, Jesus, Yeshua. Father, we choose now to turn our will. Come on, pray with me. Repeat this prayer. Say, Father, because this is about commitment. So just repeat this prayer. Just say, Father, I now choose to turn from my sinful behavior or behaviors. I choose to turn from them right now, Father. I choose to turn from my sinful lifestyle, the choices that I have made. Say, Father, forgive me. And then you say, Father, I thank you. I give you praise, Lord, I thank you. That all my past is forgiven. And you have to believe that. I thank you, Father. I thank you, God, that those who believe, they shall receive. Those who believe that all their past is forgiven, they shall receive right now. Father, I pray for them right now, God, that you would give them discernment, Lord. You would give them discernment to recognize temptation. And Father said, there is no temptation where there is no, no way of escape. He will always give you an exit sign. So, Father God, I thank you right now that you're giving them a strong discernment to know you, to trust you, to believe in your promises, to inherit the benefits that we receive through your son, Yeshua HaMashiach. Father God, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, that you would give each person strength to resist the devil. The Bible says that we are to resist the devil, but we are to draw nigh unto God. We are to repent. We are to cleanse ourselves with the word of God. So, Father God, I pray they will resist Satan. I pray, Father God, that they will trust you and believe in you, Father God, and believe in the shed blood of your son, Yeshua HaMashiach. Father God, I pray right now, Lord, that deliverance will locate them right now. As they begin to pray and come in agreement with this prayer, deliverance is happening for them right now. Salvation is here for them right now. Deliverance is here for them right now. Father God, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, I thank you, Lord, for your shed blood. I thank you, Lord, for cleansing each person. I thank you, Lord, as they begin to ask you for deliverance. It is happening now. It is happening now. As they ask you for deliverance, Abba, Father, deliver me. Abba, Father, deliver me from the covenants 
Deliver me from the bloodline covenants. Deliver me from my ancestors. Deliver me from their rituals. Deliver me from their satanic rituals, their satanic doctrines, their satanic devotions. Deliver me, Abba Father. Come on, pray. Ask him, deliver me, Father, from all the rituals. Deliver me, Father God, from Freemasonry. Come on. Deliver me from Freemasonry, Father God. Deliver me from the false gods and goddesses. Come on. Deliver me from divination and witchcraft. Deliver me from abomination. Come on, pray with me. Say, God, deliver me from abomination. Deliver me, Father God, from false religions and occults. Deliver me, Father God, from the sins that I have committed willfully, the sins that I committed knowingly. Deliver me, Father God, even from those things I didn't even know I committed, Lord. Have mercy, God. Come on, pray. Have mercy, Lord. Come on, let that demonic spirit come up to the surface. Begin to cough it out in the name of Yeshua. Let it get out of you now in the name of Yeshua. That door is opening up now. Every unclean spirit of that that is entertaining your mind, your thoughts, suicide, suicidal ideations. You demon that entered their lives from the time they were conceived. You demon, your legal rights are being removed from their lives now. You demon, I command you to go. In the name of Yeshua, Hamashiach. If, you, if you're doing this prayer, you need to take a deep breath. And blow it out. Father God, I thank you now that they are being delivered. Father God, I thank you now they're being purged from all demonic powers. They're being purged right now with the blood of Yeshua. Father God, I thank you right now that you're delivering them from the demonic kingdom. You're delivering them from the demonic powers. You're delivering them from the demonic assignments. Father God, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Father God, you're delivering them from every demonic activity within their bloodline. You're delivering them, Father God, in the mighty name of Yeshua, through the blood of the Lamb. Father God, I thank you now in the name of Yeshua, as they begin to cry out to you, Abba Father. You will hear them, Father God, and you will deliver them, Father God. You will rescue them from the plots and the assignments of the wicked one. Father God, I give you praise in this, God. I give you praise in this, Abba Father. I thank you, Lord, by the act of their own will, Father God, that they will confess Jesus Christ no matter the circumstances, no matter the situation, they will continue to confess him as their Lord, as their, he is their Lord and Savior. Father God, let the spirit of doubt, the spirit of rejection, the spirit of lust, the spirit of whoredom go in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Mm -hmm. Spirit of suspicion, go now. All the way out in the name of Yeshua. Go now. You have no more right here. Go in the name of Yeshua. Let the blood of the land speak for you. Let the blood of the land speak for you. We give you praise in this Abba Father. We glorify you in this Abba Father. Let the blood of Jesus speak for you now. Father God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father God. Deliverance is taking place for them. Let every door that was open be closed. Let every entry point that was gained through sin for the enemy to traffic in and out their lives, to network in and out their lives. Father God, I pray now you will deliver them from all their sins. And Father God, I thank you that your son, Jesus, Yeshua, defeated Satan on the cross. I thank you for the power of repentance and renunciations. I thank you, Father God, that they will choose to walk in holiness. The word of God say, be holy for I am holy. Amen. So, Father God, we thank you for peace. 
We thank you, Father God, that they will choose to become a disciple. They will choose to serve you and not want you to serve them, but they will choose to serve you, Abba Father. They will choose to wait upon you, Abba Father. They will choose you, Father God. No matter what the circumstances, they will choose you. They that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew your strength. You shall mount up like wings of eagle. You will run and not faint. Amen. You will walk and you will run. You will not stumble. You will not fall. Come on, all the way up and out, all the way up and out. The fragmented soul, Ash, the fragmented soul, Father God, we pray now that her soul will be healed in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Father God, what the enemy has stolen, let him put it back in the name of Yeshua. Father God, I thank you now for restoration and wholeness for each person that is here with me on Zoom and for those who are watching on YouTube and for them in the future. I pray, Abba Father God, for restoration and wholeness, that their soul will be restored, that they will be delivered from the covenants of the witches, the warlocks, the soothsayers, anyone that operates in the kingdom of darkness. I pray, Lord, they will be restored and healing will be their portion. And at every gate and every door that was open for cleansing, Father God, cleansing of their past will be shut and sealed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Father God, I pray now that the angels of God will locate Ash, locate Rami, Monica, Mother Sadie, and those of you that's watching online, that he will locate you. And he will gather your soul from the four corners of this earth and make you whole again. In Yeshua's name. In Yeshua's name. I let the peace of God. Let the peace of God be your help. We pray this prayer. Take another deep breath. In your nose, and blow it out. And if you need to cough, cough. I'm going to do one more prayer with you. And those of you that feel like you missed this question uh, and answer, you didn't miss nothing. God is with you. God is with you. God is with you. Father God, we thank you that every yoke of bondage is being destroyed by the anointing of God. We thank you, Father God, those yokes, those bondages are being broken and destroyed. That's good. You're getting deliverance. It's being broken. It's being destroyed. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that fear will not be their blockage. It will not hinder them. In the name of Yeshua, for you did not give them a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, we thank you for the power of the blood of Yeshua. Amen. Got one more prayer. This prayer is for, um, because Ram has been going through this for several months concerning her finances. And you need to plant in the kingdom of God. You need to plant a seed in the kingdom of God. Ask God where you should plant your seed. Not every church is bad, but you should pray and ask God. Because sometimes you don't have, my mommy, my mommy said, Jackie, you don't always have to give to the church. You know, you must do charity. That's what my mom said. Jackie must do charity. And she's right, you know. Give to charity. There's many charities out there that is doing great things. Amen. There's some good charities, especially back home in London. There's some good charities over there. And if you don't have money to give, you must have something. You have something, ain't it? You must have something you don't want, something you don't care for anymore. Go ahead and give it away. 
Okay, money is not always the answer. You have something such as I have, right? Is that what John said? Such as I have, I give to you. It's not always money. That's another bondage right there in the church. Get in line if you got $100. Get in line if you got $25, 30 40 50 60 Get in line. Ah, no. God doesn't need your money. He's not a bank teller. Okay? He don't need your money. What he wants is you. He wants the whole you. So, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for tonight as I pray for those that is having financial problems. Lord, I pray that you will bless them financially, that you will increase their storehouse, and you will rain down large sums of money, resources, whatever they need, Father God. Whatever they need in their house, Father God, I pray they will be obedient and bring something to you, Father God, that they will test you, Father God, and see that you will do this for them, Father God, because you are the Lord God Almighty. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are the Lord God Almighty that opens the floodgates of heaven, and you, sir, will pour out such a blessing, much blessings. Let the blessings of the Lord be poured out in Rami. Consider her case, Father God. Consider her case, Father God. Whoever's having financial problems, Abba Father, consider their case, Abba Father. See, Father God, you see better than I can see. Spiritually, Father God, consider their case, Father God, in the name of Yeshua. Father God, I thank you for the windows of heavens. I thank you for the floodgates. I thank you for the increase and the blessing. I thank you, Father God, let there be a place in their heart where they will plant, Father God, and they will begin to receive what you have for them in their planting, Father God, in the name of Yeshua. Father God, it's better to be obedient than to sacrifice. So Father God, I pray that they be obedient in their giving. They will be obedient to follow your will and obey your will in the name of Yeshua. Father God, I thank you right now that there will be blessings, an overflow of blessings in every area in their lives, wherever you was dry, wherever you didn't have resources, whatever you need right now, I pray right now that that, that door of abundance will begin to open for you, that you will have favor on your jobs in the name of Yeshua. You will have favor with your family members, with your co-workers, with friends, with the ministries. Father God, that favor will locate them. Uncommon favor. Uncommon favor locate them in the name of Yeshua. Father God, that you will send forth divine helpers. Divine helpers, Lord, that you will send forth your divine helpers help us, Abba Father, in the name of Yeshua. Father God, I thank you now, Lord. I thank you, Father God, that there bills will be paid for in full, utility bills, the, the water bills, gas, electric, whatever it is, God, it will be paid in full. Their cars paid in full, Father God, mortgages pay, Father God. They will not be lacking, Father God. They will not be without, Father God, in the name of Yeshua, Father God, in the name of Yeshua, Father God, that covenant they made with that money. I pray now, God, that you will bring that revelation revelation to them, Abba Father, that they will repent, Father God, and that that money will be destroyed off that altar right now. That covenant agreement with money will be destroyed off that altar in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. We thank you, Lord. So, Father God, I thank you now. For your word says, there's death and life in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Father God, I decree over apostolic ministries and every inhabitant that is here and even on Facebook. I decree, Father God, with my heart and confess with my mouth that whosoever troubleth you, they shall bear their judgment. Whosoever troubleth you, they shall bear their judgment. Whoso troubleth you, Ram, Monica, Ash, myself, and those of you on YouTube and Mama Sadie, uh, even if Mama Charlotte gets to watch this video, Jen, mm -hmm. even you, you back home in London, 
you in the West in the Caribbean, the West Indies. I decree in my heart and I confess with my mouth that whosoever troubleth you, they shall bear their judgment. Whosoever he is, whosoever she is, whosoever they are, they shall bear their own judgment in the name of Yeshua. Father God, I decree in my heart and I confess with my mouth divine favor. I pray that divine favor shall locate you. Divine progress shall locate you in your life. I pray that you will have divine blessings, divine breakthrough in the mighty name of Yeshua. Father God, I decree and I declare, Father God, that they are the head and they are not the tail. You need to pro prophesy. Learn to speak the word. I am the head. I am not the tail. Come on, prophesy. I am the head. I am not the tail. I am above. I am not beneath. In the name of Yeshua. I am the head. I am not the tail. Come on, prophesy. I am the head. I am not the tail. In the name of Yeshua. I am the head. I am not the tail. In the name of Yeshua. I am above, I am not beneath. I am above. Uh-huh. I'm above my circumstances. Come on. I'm above my circumstances in the name of Yeshua. I am not beneath in the name of Yeshua. Father God, I decree in my heart and I confess with my mouth that they shall, whoever's listening, believe this, say, I shall receive, come on, prophesy, I shall receive divine connections, divine networks, divine contacts, divine links, I shall receive divine restoration, I shall receive divine open doors, come on, prophesy, I shall receive divine restoration, divine links, di divine collaborations and networks, I shall receive divine contacts for my business, Business. Come on, for my business, for my future, for my marriage, for my children. Come on, prophesy. I shall receive divine favor. I shall receive divine blessings. I shall receive divine elevations, divine promotions in the name of Yeshua. Father God said he will set one down and set one up. Promotion does not come but from God, from the north from the south, from the west and the east. Let there be promotion for you in the name of Yeshua. Let the spirit of stumbling be removed out of your lives now in the name of Yeshua. Let the spirit of backwardness go in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. No more backwardness, no more delay in the name of Yeshua. Come on, anti-progress. I command you, spirit, to go in the name of Yeshua. Come on, take a deep breath in your nose and blow it out. And if you feel like you're urged to cough, cough. Whatever that manifestation is, let it happen. Get delivered from the spirit of backwardness. Come on, get delivered from your ears being stopped up where you cannot hear the word of God. Father God, I pray that their physical ears and their spiritual ears will begin to open. Open up now so they can hear the voice of the Spirit of God. Come on, let the ministry begin to come alive in you. Come on, be awakened by the words of the living God. In the name of Yeshua, Father God, I thank you for that divine healing. I thank you for divine healing for those who need healing. I pray, Abba, Father, I deny Elohim, Jehovah God. Healing will be their portion. Every assignment that was assigned to your lives is now null and void of its power. It ceases right here. The Lord rebuke every unclean spirit, the spirit of infirmity in your lives. The Lord rebuke the demonic spirits that wants to attack you in your sleep while you are sleeping. Attack your household. Attack your children. Whatever's going on in the midst of that. Today is the day. It ceases now. In the name of Yeshua, it go all the way out. All the way out. Take a deep breath and blow it out. And if you need a cough, take a deep cough. Just go oh, cough that. All of it out. Don't do any swallowing. Begin to spit. Father God, in the name of Yeshua, I decree in my heart and I confess with my mouth that every person here is healthy. 
Health is your portion. You are healthy in the name of Yeshua. You are rich. You are prosperous. You are successful in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Say, so be unto me. Come on, pray. Say, so be unto me in the name of Yeshua. I am healthy. I am rich. I am successful. I am prosperous. So be unto me and my household. Come on, pray. So be unto me and my household. In Jesus' name, amen. Abba, Father, now that they have opened their mouths and they have prayed for themselves, I pray, God, that every chain in their life has been broken and it shall remain broken. Every covenant that was active is now deactivated. That covenant is destroyed and it shall remain destroyed. Every curse that was spoken out of their mouths, every curse that was spoken over them, knowingly and unknowingly, those curses are canceled canceled and they shall remain counseled. Father God, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, Lord, Father, I thank you, Lord, as I make these declarations, they will have their blessings and their blessings will locate them. They will have faith to believe, to receive, Abba Father, in the name of Yeshua. Abba Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you. I thank you, Father God, that their confession shall bring about their possessions. Their confession will bring about their possessions in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach. That's the Hebrew name for Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Proclaim him as your Lord and Savior. When they come into your dreams, begin to speak his name. There is power in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Father God, I pray now that they put on the whole armor of God. They have on the helmet of salvation in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, the breastplate of righteousness, and they have the shield of faith to quench every fiery dart of the wicked, and their feet shut upon the preparation of the gospel of peace. Ah, Father God, I thank you for the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Yay, God, yay. Not my will be done, but your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. In Yeshua HaMashiach's name we pray. Amen. So God bless you. Thank you for being with me. It's eight o'clock. I've been on here for two hours. Thank you for being here. I pray that you received your deliverance and you must maintain your deliverance. How do you maintain your deliverance? With prayer, studying the word of God, fellowship and worship with the brothers and the sisters. I pray that you'll find a good church home where they minister the gospel of Jesus Christ and not their own will but they speak God's will and they make sure God's will is being carried out in your life and the lives of others. So I pray you will find the right house for you to go and fellowship. Amen. So Father, we just thank you as I seal this prayer, seal the blood of the Lamb. I thank you, Lord, for those of you that's on faith, not Facebook, God have mercy, you too. (laughs) We thank you that this is your year to win, your, your victory. This is your year to win. This is your year. This is your winning streak. As Tiffany Montgomery will say, prophetess tip will say, this is your winning streak this year. Amen. So let us proclaim fast to that word. This is your winning streak. This year you shall win. This year you shall overcome. This year you have multiple breakthroughs. This year you will be restored. This year everything that was stolen from you will be given back to you one hundred fold. Hey, in Yeshua's name. Amen. Thank you for watching. God bless you, YouTube.